The Hornets lose their second game to an L.A. team on this West Coast road trip. How do they get out of this thing? And then we'll play a game. High, mid, low confidence 2024 predictions. That's all still to come. Locked on Hornets. You are locked on Hornets. Your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cuz. We live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods, and that includes YouTube, where Doug is usually dancing, but he just, like, raised his eyebrow at me, and I don't know what's... (laughs) That was a weird look. That was the most shook I've ever been, looking at you in the camera, not dancing, smiling, being goofy, showing off that stash of yours. Like It was almost like you were angry at me for that intro I gave. What's going on? I'm not angry. I'm exhausted. I mean, you know, the West Coast road trip, uh, luckily it's only coming once this season. Sometimes it comes twice. But it's one thing that the West Coast road trip, you know, game start at 1030, you're up until like two. But then, you know, to also suffer a nine game losing streak, it's it's difficult. I mean, I'm just I, I like to think of myself as an avatar for the fan base. You know, and so I'm just really embodying what I feel like are the frustrations of everyone that stayed up to watch the game last night. Yeah, the face showed it all. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. There's Doug's tired notes on his sub stack, every Hornets box score dot com. And you can listen to me, WFNZ, every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. We got another one to talk about here, Doug. Another loss where in the third quarter, another one of those where they come out of the locker room losing that next quarter. They would lose the third quarter, 41-23, lose the game overall, 133-112. to Let's hit, uh, hear your thoughts first. What would I find on everyhornetsboxscore.com? Well, I thought they played a really good first half, and we've seen that over the past couple of games. They've been able to comp- compete with these elite Western Conference teams They just haven't been able to complete the game. And we saw an unusual thing for the Charlotte Hornets in that first half. They were shooting the three ball well. And Mm -hmm. they finished the game with 15 made threes. I believe they had eight of those in the first half. And they were able to keep pace despite Anthony Davis scoring 18 points in that first half. They were obviously (laughs) – every team knows the weakness of the Charlotte Hornets, and that weakness is um, interior defense. And so – they, you know, heavy dose of AD, who is generally playing very well. Uh, but you saw, I think, the Lakers team in the first half, that's the Lakers team that a lot of teams have saw, the, the slow, the scene this season, the slow, plodding Lakers team that love to get in their half-court defense, that love to get in their half-court offense. And it wasn't working as well for them against Charlotte. And so then at the beginning of that second half, Walker, they started pushing the pace. LeBron James said, all right, I'm going to go in attack mode here in transition, getting matched up with McGowan's, with Brandon Miller, who both started because of injuries. And the the size on the wing was an issue. (laughs) L.A. started just five monsters, just tall guys, big guys, beefy guys. And eventually they wore down the Hornets. And, you know, in that third quarter, uh, they it was a lot of LeBron early, and then LeBron and AD went to the bench, and you thought, all right, here's the opportunity for the Hornets to, to make some ground up. Uh, and the Lakers go to a zone without either of those guys on the floor, and the Hornets just turned the ball over and just had a disaster of a back half of that third quarter, and, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, it was, and you're right. It was the back half of the third quarter more. I think it was tied at 61 with about 10 minutes left to go, and then that's when it all started to unravel as the quarter would go on. You mentioned the bench for the Lakers once they came in. Yeah, you were hoping for the Hornets to be able to win those bench points. Not even close. How about over 60 bench points for the Lakers in this game? D'Angelo Russell hit shots. Austin Reeves was excellent. There was that one stretch a little later in the game where he was just taking it to the rack, hitting a couple threes as well. And how about even Max? Max Christie. I remember the Hornets working him out, getting to talk That's to him. Guy. That was your guy. You love Max Christie. <laughs> you do this with so many random players. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember him being your guy. I just, I, I just interviewed him or a little bit. Either way, Max Christie did a good job in this game too. And so over 60 bench points for the Lakers squad. Yeah, I, I look at this game, Doug, and I see Anthony Davis having dominated only in 26 minutes. I see LeBron James having dominated in his own way playing only 25 minutes and it's like 
this is exactly what the Lakers would want. I, it's it's stars not getting to even 30 runtime and then still being able to beat a basketball team by over 20 points. You separate yourself in the second half. You even get your little bit of competition in the first. I, they just had it exactly the way they wanted to against this Hornets team. Competitive in the first half, so you can't just show up and get the dub. Like You actually have to grind for it a little bit. And then you separate yourself. And then you look up at the box score and your young guys like my boy, Max Christie, and some of the bench guys are getting lots of minutes, scoring lots of bench points, and your stars get to go healthy and rested into the next game. Yeah, I mean, there were just matchup problems all over the floor. It wasn't just about LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Then you had, because they went Miles Bridges on, who was playing power forward, they put Miles on LeBron James. That left Bryce McGowan's to guard Rui Hachimura. And I was yeah. surprised they didn't go to Hachi Mora in the first half, but they finally figured it out. <laughs> they, <laughs> we got it. We got it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> they finally figured it out, and Rui scored 12 points on five of six shooting in that third quarter and just back down Bryce. And, and you, can't <laughs> you can't even help in those scenarios – because then you're leaving AD open or you're leaving LeBron open. Like this is just there are a couple of teams that just have size and strength such that and and multiple superstars such that especially with a Hornets team missing so many guys, it's going to be near impossible for them to guard a team like that over the course of 48 minutes. I think it was yeah. valiant, it was admirable that they were able to do it for a half. They're not going out there and just getting you know, shelled from quarter one to quarter four. But they just don't – this is not a team that is constructed uh, to, to to fight off these teams for 48 minutes. Well, and, and you mentioned Rui, man. He was just a bully down there. And, and how yeah. about – even for the Hornets, too, how about both teams – going crazy with the and ones. Eric Collins mentioned it on the broadcast last night, too. I mean, there were and ones all over this game. Rui had a couple. PJ had two. I think Miles might have had one, but I mean that I would like to know what the stat is for most and ones this season because I I might pick this game blindly. There were just so many. The other thing I'll note too here, Doug, is this is the second game in a row where they've had 29 assists or more. So 29 here, 31 in the last game, as we talked about, that being the best passing Clippers game. But you've seen both LA squads, they're really moving it. Like I, I do think that is clicking for this squad as it stands right now where it's not LaMelo, just him facilitating, driving, running the offense all together. They need a lot of help. And so Terry is doing it. He gave you eight last night. I think Miles has been passing the ball pretty well the last couple of games. There was a nice slide from PJ cutting to the basket where Miles was able to hit him. PJ able to hit with a dunk. Uh, we've seen some passing from PJ, but really I, I think not even zero assists in this one, but I think Miles has been the guy I've noticed most that has really taken on the facilitating. And then, wow. you know, Ish Smith, Nick Smith Jr. How about Nick Smith Jr. coming in with four assists, something that we don't really see from him. So I, I think the passing has been pretty good. It, better against the Clippers. It, they didn't even hit their three-point shots like they did in this one, and they still finished with more assists, and you could just tell just watching the game. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way they're moving the ball. When Miles passes, it looks good. I think it's when he does I think I think it's when he doesn't that he's making some interesting decisions. Now he got off to a great start in this game and hit uh three three pointers in the first quarter. He's been really struggling with his three ball, been in a general shooting funk. Mm -hmm. But he fell in love with it, fell in love with himself, and I thought played a little selfishly as the game went on, despite those assists that you point out. Um I think the decision making with the ball in his hands was very questionable. And look, if you're going to pull off a win that you're not supposed to win on the road out west during this stretch, you have to have one of your main scores. And right now, that's Terry Rozier and Miles Bridges. That's it. With Gordon Hayward not Gordon Hayward through this nine game losing streak, that was your most efficient score overall. Was Gordon Hayward? He's out. He's out for a while. So Terry Rozier, Miles Bridges, one of those guys has to have a monster game. And Terry's been out, but since he's been back, has not had one. Miles has been pretty pretty inefficient. And after those three threes that Miles hit, he went one of ten for the rest of the game and turned the ball over and drove to nowhere and pulled up for some reason when he needed to pass. Um, it was just 
it's 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 difficult to watch the Hornets. I think give the kind of effort that they didn't give early in the season on defense when they could have piled yeah. up wins. Yeah. Now giving That's that true. effort when the offensive power has just completely gone away. Well, and and last one with, with PJ, thirty percent from three this year just isn't going to cut it. I, it's no. it's killing him. It's hurting him. And look, that it's the whole yeah. I you keep shooting as much as you can, especially when you're open, right? Like not bad decisions, but you keep shooting in practice. You try to fix it, and some guys just get into a slump. We've talked about PJ's confidence before, and PJ's confidence might just be hurting him from deep. He's shooting better on twos this year than he did last. He shot sixty percent on twos two years ago on a much lower volume roll, and then it you know, went crazy. It increased a lot last year with all the injuries this year. You're probably down a little bit more so with miles, but you're still playing on a decent volume. The twos are up, which is great, but the three point shot is way down 30% from, pre- from PJ. You know, there's still a lot of time in the season to get those percentages up and help. But at this point, it's not like we feel good about them getting to the play in. If PJ gets his numbers up, it's really only going to be for, him and playing better basketball overall, but not salvaging the season from a postseason standpoint. And that's frustrating for it to have gotten off to this slow of a start. All right, let's move on. Speaking of confidence, coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. We'll give you 2024 predictions with our highest confidence level, medium confidence level, and lowest confidence level. I understand the assignment now. I did not at first, and I'll explain what I mean on the other side of the break. Coming up next, Locked on Hornets. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. And instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, I don't want any of that. You pick more or less than on two to six player staff projections and then watch the winnings roll on in. With the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league. It's a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues and so maybe you think dj chark for the panthers will continue his hot streak you can click the more than for his receiving total and then maybe miles bridges points he's still getting a lot of them maybe assists for the team if that's one pick more than on a couple of those locally and you might just be a winner prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return in the second that player is rebooted prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nba use code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nba use code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 2024 predictions coming up next when I clicked on the rundown for both of us here, I, all I saw was high confidence, mid confidence, uh-huh. and low confidence. What I did not see was the title 2024 predictions right up under our main segment two category. And so my eyes just glossed over it and saw the standalone high, mid, low confidence. So what I thought you were planning for us today, Doug, was to pick players for the Hornets that are playing with that confidence level as it stands right now. <laughs> I was like, okay, so just different. I like it. Let's go ahead and figure out who's playing with the most and who's playing with the least amount. Would you like to see those answers rapid fire before we move on to 2024 predictions? I know. I would like to see them in concert with what, because I, I, it's funny that you and I had two completely different ideas for like very radio segments. So I just, I think we do them, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'll give you my high confidence uh, prediction for 2024. We're, okay. we're at the end of the year here. And so we should. Hopefully, hopefully we'll just lose this tape though and never look at it again because I'm sure most of these will be wrong. But I would also like to hear who's who's playing with high confidence okay. as we go along this list. I like it. Okay, you want to lead us off here with the actual assignment, the 2024 predictions from Doug Branson, and I have some too. Maybe those can be my rapid fire, and then we can just focus on yours and also the players playing with the most uh, confidence right now. Why don't you lead us off here, Doug? I think my high confidence prediction is not going to be a surprise to people that listen to this show regularly. It's the thing that I've been saying uh, needs to happen uh, as soon as possible, and that's that Mitch Kupchak is no longer general manager of this team. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I believe with high confidence that it will occur sometime 
in the year of our Lord, 2024. <laughs> um, Mitch Kupchak's tenure has had some successes, uh, mainly in the draft, um, but has also featured a team that has been seemingly like a young roster for five seasons now, um, has featured a few play-in blowouts, and really the, the team I don't think is in a significantly better position today than when he first became general manager. And yes, there are some you know excuses that you can lay in in terms of players being injured, but at the end of the day, as Steve Clifford likes to note, you, you are your record, and, and I think the, the Hornets with now a new ownership group will look to uh, a new front office to lead this team into the future. All right, I'll give you my prediction first. Um, it's along the same lines of the front office. My high confidence prediction is that this is the last year the Hornets' core pieces will be here. It's the last year of the Hornets as we know them. I think we're going to undergo a lot of change. The bar is low because there hasn't been much change at all going from season to season. When Cody Martin, Dennis Smith Jr., Frank Nilakina, when those are the guys that are your biggest new acquisitions, then, of course, you're going to undergo some change. And in a little bit means it's the most you've ever experienced. But Steve Clifford, I'm even counting him. Mitch Kupchak, I'm counting him. Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, different combinations. I think what you know the Hornets as the last few seasons will you know, dramatically, seems dramatic, but I, I do think it's okay to say that. Big, big changes come into the core as we know this team. Well, it'll it'll be dramatic relative to the fact that they have not changed yeah. all that much over the past five years. That's the whole thing. Like any 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 change to the core is going to be dramatic, even though the results have not been there such that you would go, "Wow, that's crazy." Um, can I tell you now, my high confidence players? <laughs> Lots of young guys on my list. I'll Please. go. Right my, my youngest players here, or my, my highest confidence, are the youngest players here. Brandon uh -huh. Miller continues sure. to. like He's just shown it all season long. It's not going away. It doesn't matter what kind of game he has. I think Bryce McGowan is playing with some confidence right now. He's when he starts. Yeah, that's true. 22 minutes for Bryce McGowan. Three of six from the field. All of those field goals were three-pointers. So not attacking in this one against L.A., but is shooting the ball a lot more. And then I'll go to the other young one. How about Nick Smith Jr.? Doesn't matter if he comes in later, 18 minutes here. He comes up with uh, four assists and six points. We know what he was able to do against the Nuggets when he was trying to fight for a rotation spot. I think the young guys here, Doug, are playing with the most confidence right now. So that's what I, I agree. Say. Well, I agree. And that's good, right? Because they're getting an opportunity. Should mention Brandon Miller. We, did, we didn't really talk too much about him in that uh, game recap. He did have 17 points in, in the final box score here. Five of nine, 17 points on nine attempts. He actually got to the free throw line, something yeah. we haven't seen from him uh, much. He comes back after the right ankle sprain. He only missed a game. He only, he only misses one game due to ankle sprains. He's had three of them this season. Two left ankle sprains, one right ankle sprain. Missed one game apiece for each of those injuries. Some eagle-eyed uh, readers from Every Hornets box score noticed that he was wearing uh, what appeared to be either a lot of tape around those ankles or possibly no, no, even some it. ankle braces. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're on ankle brace watch again, baby. Three three ankle sprains for the young for the young guy, and he says, "Hey, I'm going to protect my career. I can see the future, and I want that future to be bright. I don't want that future to be marred by injuries and ankle concerns." So maybe he's putting the tech on there. We'll have to if get a confirmation right. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, hey, we'll, we we'll need you. you. You're the journalist. we got to get you on this. You I confirmed the, the LaMelo ankle brace not wearing story. Now we need you on this. I do not want to be known as the ankle brace guy. That's what I don't <laughs> want to be known as. <laughs> ankle All breaking right. news. Yeah, that's it. Yes, ankle breaking <laughs> news. That's Walker Mail's <laughs> new Twitter account. What else do you have us, uh, for us here? Medium confidence level prediction for 2024. Okay, so medium confidence, meaning... I think this will probably happen, but I could see it also not happening. And we'll stay on the ankle braces thing. I'll stick with LaMelo here. I think LaMelo, medium confidence, will wear ankle braces again, but it won't be until next season. I think he needs another summer to like work this whole thing out, get the custom situation, something that's going to work for him better. I don't think he's going to make that adjustment midseason season. Um, he's just going to go with what he knows for now. But I do think that um, not cooler heads will prevail, but just sort of wiser heads will prevail. 
and say, hey, listen, max contract. The Hornets can't do anything to force him to do anything. But hopefully his people, hopefully he just kind of looks in the mirror and goes, hey, I would like to make an all-star game again. I would like my career not to be ruined by ankle injuries. I'm going to give anything a shot. And I, and I think we see him wear ankle braces again at some point. Okay, uh, my medium confidence level prediction is Miles Bridges will not be a Charlotte Hornet next year. Um, maybe other people would go more confident, but when the Hornets are getting rid of talent and they've already shown that they are willing to sign Miles Bridges to a one-year deal, I'm leaving that door open that they just might do it again. But it's still medium-level confidence for me. I do think it would happen. We actually didn't talk about this here, Doug, but Shams of The Athletic, Shams Sharania, said, quote, I'm told there are several teams, including the Lakers and, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, this was in the offseason, but we know about the Pistons and their rumored interest from Shams in Miles Bridges. And that's something that we've seen reported before because yeah. it would be Miles going home. That would be the only reason as to why Miles might agree to go back to Detroit, which maybe home is valuable to him. It means different things for different players. But if Miles wants to go to Detroit, then he would have to put up with what is a lot longer losing streak than what he's undergoing now at 28 after the Pistons were up 20 against the Celtics. They eventually lose in overtime, and now they're undergoing a 28-game losing streak, which is just brutal. So is that something Miles Bridges would say, okay, I'm willing to get traded to them, or does he just wait it out until we get to the offseason and decide to sign somewhere as an unrestricted free agent? But there are two pathways to where Miles could be playing for a different team maybe this year in 2024 or at the start of next season being 2024. That's my mid-level confidence prediction. I would put it at mid as well because I think that uh, I don't put it as high confidence because I think Schnall and Plotkin both signed off on Miles Bridges yep, rejoining exactly. this team. Okay? Exactly. So th they didn't have a problem with it. Now, they also did not sign off on giving him a big contract. So if he tries to – and, and especially if the results so far this season hold, if he doesn't just go off – you know, in the in the second in the back half of this year, and have like an all star level performance, then I think you know they're not going to be willing to do that. Could another team like Detroit in free agency? Because I think the latest report from Shams was that Detroit would be sniffing around a couple of guys, including Miles Bridges, in free agency. Because yeah. remember, because Miles signed the qualifying offer, he's got a, essentially a no trade clause, and and I, and I don't see him lifting that for Detroit. But in free agency, you know, he'll he'll have a, a bit more leverage with a team like Detroit that is starving for talent. The Hornets will be too, uh, but the Hornets sort of know what they have in Miles, whereas Detroit would be trying to get the car off the lot. So I, I agree with that. And uh, the other thing I was going to say was that I have one more medium confidence prediction quickly, is that someone, and this is a little in line with your high confidence prediction, someone that the fan base holds dear – will be traded. Yeah. And, and and I don't mean LaMelo, I don't mean Brandon. Those guys to me are untouchable. You're not you're not moving those guys. But someone that the fan base holds dear will be traded. So we're talking about Wait, you know, we're only uh, talking about one player almost, right? I mean, I I get it. You're you're probably not. I I bet you're going to include Mark Williams here, but also like I Terry Rozier is the one that's most likely that that the players hold or the fans. Well, hold I think it could be Terry. I think it could well and and I think one of the second round darlings, so a Bryce McGowan's. Yeah. I don't know that the fan base holds Cody Martin dear, but I think they they know his they know when he's playing well how valuable he is. So I think there there is going to be a player that the fan base holds dear. And because the fan base is not prepared, I don't think, for what's about to happen. Because they haven't made trades in years. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys are going to move and people are going to be super disappointed because they've just been used to seeing... I think they'll understand. Because they'll understand, hey, this team's got to get better. They haven't been good in years. They haven't made the playoffs since, uh, yeah. you know, 16. They haven't won a playoff series in 22 years now. So I, they'll understand, but it, it'll still hurt. I, I think... I think from what I see from the fan base here, Doug, I think people are ready for a change and they won't care as much. Like right. Terry is the guy that they'll care as much about anyone seeing go. And they're going to understand that one. Everybody else. Cool, man. Uh, we just, we need a change and it just wasn't working. Mid-level confidence players real quickly. I would go to Terry Rogier, who's just kind of status quo confidence level right now. Like I'm not saying it's ever waning, but I don't, it's not gone. Like he's still playing his brand of basketball. Just isn't, isn't hitting at the rate. I, I flirted with, with high confidence level. You know, I'll go mid to high Nick Richards. 
Uh, Nick Richards was active. I would say super, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, the the Hornets are playing defense better because Nick Richards has stepped his game up. Defensive rebounding in that game against LA, he was fighting off AD for defensive rebound. Like AD's not like, you know, super bold guy, but you got to beat him to the spot or he's going to snatch the ball out of the air. And Nick Richards was doing it, baby. Yeah, Nick Richards might be in the high confidence category. Um, I needed another one for mid, so I just brought him down there. But you're right. More accurately, he's playing with some high confidence. All right, you want to just finish with the low nah, confidence? No, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I need some room to breathe. Thing. I got two right. low confidence predictions. These are the ones I'm most likely to get wrong. These are the craziest ones. I want some time to breathe. Let's, let's send it to the next segment. All right, coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Let's see Doug get crazy. Find out if you think there's a chance that he's right or wrong, including myself and also who are going to be the low confidence players I reveal. That's still to come in the last segment. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers. They stay hot on FanDuel. Get in soon because the season is about to end. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins and if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, even more than that. Doug, what have been the spreads for the Hornets in these last couple of games against LA? I think it was 12 and a half against the Lakers, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't feel like the Hornets are covering on any of these spreads that we've seen. Uh, they they have not. The spreads have been wide. Um, I don't have exact numbers in front of me right now, uh, but Vegas. Maybe the, is, Nuggets, maybe the Nuggets was like 10 at home. You can, and then they you can do a little guess the line if you want. The line is up for the Phoenix Suns game. Okay. If you want. Well, in Phoenix, not great this year. I'm going to go with, if it's 12 against the Lakers, I'm going to go, I don't know, 10 and a <laughs> I'll go 12. I'll, st- I'll stick with 12 against Phoenix. Well, it was better than what you were thinking, which was reducing it, because it's 15 yeah. and a half. Okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's so big. Yowza! Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. Well, maybe we bet the buzz there, but um, it hasn't been working for us, and so we'll see what we can do. You can try, though, by going to FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season. Continue in the NBA season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. More Locked On Hornets ahead. Doug, real quickly, how's the energy level been? Like, thankfully, the game tonight against Phoenix is at 8 o'clock. We don't have to stay up nearly as late. But at the end, like five minutes left to go in the third quarter, I look up at the clock and it's midnight. It's like 12.07. Like, man, you you do have to be built different. West Coast road trips for the team, just as strenuous on our lives, you know, quote unquote, just as strenuous on us. How's the energy level holding up for you right now? And the energy level's fine. I would say I'm glad that I'm not covering a West Coast team on the East Coast uh, because when I cover these late games, I eat a lot. Mm. I have to just snack just to keep myself moving and grooving, and I get nervous, you know, through the game. I nervous eat anyway, but then everybody's <laughs> gone to bed. I have no accountability, you know. No, no one's saying, "Hey, you might want to put down the uh, the Ritz crackers there, buddy." Um, you've eaten an entire sleeve. So that's, Ouch. you know, how, how many pounds have you gained since the Hornet season started? <laughs> <laughs> I'm averaging more pounds, uh, than miles bridges is averaging three point makes. I'll tell you that much right now. All right. So here we go. Do, do you want to bring here? I'll actually just go ahead and start with you bringing that in because the, the low confidence <laughs> players right now for me, it's both of the front court players that were drafted by Mitch Kupchak, his first two drafts here. It's Miles Bridges and it's PJ Washington. You know, PJ, I, it's it's frustrating with PJ now, man. And I know it has been for some players or for some people already, but I, the, the two point shot going in more so, the three point shot not falling, the turnovers aren't great. And so while we've seen progress from him overall in his career when he puts the ball on the floor and creates for others a little more. I still worry about him completely taking care of the basketball. And we've seen that a couple of times, but it's the three point shot that just isn't falling. And that that's a big part of his game. It's it's three and D it's being able to be a versatile defender while also being able to play an outside in game. I don't think his inside game is strong enough to say inside out. And so it's usually starting with the perimeter and he's just not hitting shots at this moment. And so look, you still have, 50 games left more than 50 games left to increase those percentages that's going to matter 
Um, it's just, it's been a slow start in the first, you know, what are we now? Like, you know, more than a quarter into the season and it's, it's frustrating to see. So I would say him and miles bridges who just isn't shooting as well. Yeah. Even the twos for miles, Doug, I mean, he was four of four of 10 from three point range. And I know you've been focusing on that. He's not been doing well, but how about three of 10 inside the yard? Like that's somebody that once he gets downhill, you want him to finish strong at the rim and three of 10 ain't going to cut it either. Well, and one wonders, I think, if that's leaking into some of the bad decision making when you're talking about the pull, the the contested pull ups that he took against LA. If he's thinking to himself, "Yeah, I could get to the rim, but when I when I get there, I'm I'm not really performing very well. So why don't I just you know see about this pull up opportunity?" But I think the thing that is worrying with Miles from the perspective of should the Charlotte Hornets give him a big contract in the off season, is that in 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 this nine game losing streak sample the Hornets have competed in a few of these games and then the game starts to slip away and I just feel like watching Miles when the game starts to slip away from the Hornets his decision making gets worse you know what I'm saying and Mm -hmm. and to me all-star players guys you want to invest a lot of money in it's got to be the opposite of that when the game starts to slip away, I mean, I feel that way about LaMelo Ball. When the game starts to slip away, you know, LaMelo goes in. We saw it so many times. First three quarters, LaMelo not shooting the ball very well. Get, game looks like it's out of hand. And he goes in into the phone booth, puts on the Superman costume, comes out blazing in the fourth quarter to get them back in the games. He's done that multiple times this season before he got injured. Not what's happening with Miles Bridges. When the game starts to slip away, he commits more turnovers. He misses more shots. He fades. Well, and and two, how much of this is this is just kind of the player he is? Because, it, I, and I know we're focusing on the perimeter, but Doug, here he is shooting 32% on threes. He shot 33 the last season that he played. You have the one outlier season. That's what it is. If you play what is five years in the league now having, you know, supposed to be playing in six and only one of those years you shot 40% from distance. Like that's the outlier year and he's shooting 32. It's about online with what he shot the other four seasons that he played NBA basketball. It's the twos that he's only shooting 52% right now is 59, 59 each of the last two seasons he played before that. So that that's, what's really hurting. Like to me, he could survive not hitting those shots from deep as long as he was still getting to the rack and finishing there. But he's not doing that right now. Um, I, I complimented his passing when, as you said, when he passes, I think he's been making some really nice ones, finding some cutting guys, and that's how you were able to accumulate five assists. That's nice. I like seeing that. But Miles has to finish at the rim. Like That is your number one priority, I think, with this squad. Okay, low confidence predictions for 2024. These are the things that I'm least sure are going to happen. Uh, number one, I, this is going to surprise you, Walker. I think low confidence prediction, one of Terry Rozier or Gordon Hayward are traded. I don't think either of these guys gets traded. Oh, I think okay. they, I think they hold on to Terry because the packages that they're offered for his contract are not such that it outweighs the benefit of having him on the team. Remember, I don't. Well, I won't say remember. I'm saying I'm coming at this from the perspective of this team is try, going to try to compete next season. They're not going to tear it all the way down to the studs and rebuild because they just gave LaMelo Ball a max contract. This t- this team still feels like they're focused on winning. And to do that, you have to have talent on your roster. Terry Rozier is a talented player. So, I don't but I and I don't think the packages coming back are going to offset that. With Gordon Hayward, I think they're going to look at it. I mean, you got the injury now that that may, you know, they're going to reevaluate him in 2 weeks because of the left calf strain. That may if that extends any further, that may dampen some of the trade talks that were swirling around him. And and ultimately, I think Schnall and Plotkin are going to look at this and go, okay, we'd rather this just come off the books and have a little bit more flexibility for the future front office that we're going to construct here. So I actually think low confidence, Terry Gordon getting traded. So so you think um, Gordon, we just play out the rest of his contract and he's gone. And you think Terry starts next season with the Hornets is what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. With my low confidence 2024 prediction, my low confidence one is the Hornets will quickly build a new core. So high confidence is the mm-hmm. core will change around them. Building a new core means you feel really good about what's about to happen. And that's what I'm low confidence in right now. But I think by default, you're going to have these new players. So Lamelo is going to be here. 
Brandon is already expected to be second fiddle to LaMelo next season, at least. Maybe Brandon surpasses him, a second overall pick. There's certainly that possibility with his skill set. And then you still have Terry. But, Doug, they're also going to get a high draft pick this year, at least if the odds play out exactly how they're supposed to. Detroit's going to beat him. San That's Antonio's going to gonna beat him. That's yep. the trade piece. So, well, what would you would you trade it for? You know, an, another off season of use the first round pick or trade it. I love it. It's locked on Hornets. Deja vu. We'll, so, we'll have that discussion in depth. But right now, I'm saying that's the trade piece if you want the the talent because you're not going to get a massive haul for it because this is a weak draft. But if you're really focused, there, there is no unless I mean, if you get the number one overall pick, then all right, let's 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 hold on, let's see let's see how this draft class develops. But right now, it doesn't seem like there's there's not a Wimbenyama, you know, there's not a consensus prize in this draft. So I think you know, if you wanted to, it's not it's not trading Terry, it's trading a high draft pick. That's your avenue to getting a a new core featuring some all star level talent. So so my 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 low confidence prediction is that they're going to hit on building up this new core because it is still really hard to do anyway. And here's Lamelo, here's Brandon Miller, who I would still consider new. Right, it's his rookie season. The dudes played twenty games. I, I think we consider him new right now compared to the Terry Miles P J Gordon years and whoever this next draft pick might be or who it might be used to trade for that. That is what is going to be interesting because you, you do have a big old pivot with this draft pick coming up. The only thing I'll I'll, (laughs) I'll say too about that, that we do this every year with the, this is going to be a weak draft class thing. So many people thought the same for the LaMelo draft and you've got stars all over the place. And so I like, I'm always wary of, Oh, well this draft sucks. Let's just go ahead and trade the pick. Lots of ballers have come from that in, in pretty quickly. So maybe that could be the same thing here. But who knows what the Hornets are going to do with it, Doug. I, if, if they are so desperate to compete next season and compete right away in order to appease LaMelo, appease the fans, you trade that first round pick for, I don't know, what would that be? If, if it's a top four pick, right? If the odds stay the same and they have the fourth best odds right now going into the lottery. Plenty of time to have that discussion. Plenty of time. Wait, let's just let people dream. Let's let people dream. Plenty of time to have that discussion. What are they dreaming uh, I, but, about, though? That's what my question <laughs> what if, I don't know. Well, I got to go to sleep. I got to figure okay. it out. All right. All right. Uh, I got a couple more low confidence. I'll rapid fire before we get out of here. Uh, one, I think low confidence. Steve Clifford will remain head coach of the Charlotte Hornets. Mm. I think if you ask me, you know, will he be fired? That's probably I'd put that at high confidence at yeah, this point because there there is a house cleaning coming typically that's going to include the head coach as well although I put him at low because remaining because I think that the injuries have been so bad that there is an inbuilt excuse to say hey if if we want to do this with Clifford he's it, it, you know you got to pull the players if the me- the message seems to still be hitting he's still he's getting these guys to improve on defense against really good talented teams and if the if the coaching crop out there isn't such that you see a guy that's like obvious, and the Hornets haven't been able to even get that guy. Remember the whole Kenny Atkinson debacle. The Schnall and Plotkin want to over the next couple of years. It's going to take time. They want to build a world class organization that includes, you know, amenities for players and amenities for coaches and new practice facilities. But that's going to take time. Maybe they wait to go get that big fish for a year or two. And meanwhile, you get someone in, in Steve Clifford who, if the players continue to to enjoy being around, could kind of shepherd a, a mini retooling of the roster. Any more rapid fire? Or is that oh, the last yeah. one? Final one. Low confidence. Michael Jordan faxes a letter to Schnall and Plotkin that simply reads, quote, I'm not coming back. Oh, <laughs> you pulled a he's not, he's not getting anywhere near this disaster. He's having fun with his race cars and all the other stuff that MJ is doing. There was a funny quote. I don't think we ever got to this, but someone, I think it was a game in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and someone asked Steve Clifford about, you know, MJ moving. Uh, back if he was still going to be involved and blah 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 and Steve Clifford was like look he's got a lot going on you know he's got his NASCAR (laughs) team he's got (laughs) it's just so it's so funny you know as we're doing this sort of retrospective on 2023 and predictions about 2024 it's just so funny to think about where we started with Michael Jordan owning the Charlotte Bobcats putting on a uniform going to the practice 
uh, uh, court and showing the guys what's what to where it all ended up, where he's basically like washing his hands of all like, yeah, I'm around, but like, I don't really, don't ask me about anything. <laughs> he's not really around. No, no, not really. All right, that'll do it for Lockdown Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. Happy We're free New and available Year! anywhere you get your pods. And that includes YouTube. You can go check out every hornetsboxscore.com. Please do so. Doug, the curator of such website. And you can listen to me on WFNZ.com and uh, the app and just the radio station. I don't know why I went to the internet first. I don't know why I did that. WFNZ 92.7 FM. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great New Year's Eve. Safe and healthy. We want to put the safe caveat in there as well. And then we'll be back with you to start the new year coming in. More Thor in 2024. No. 